Welcome to the basic obstetric ultrasound training course for healthcare providers. Ultrasound plays an important role in identifying pregnancy related conditions that put the mother or fetus at risk during delivery. In most low income countries, there is a shortage of people experienced in performing pregnancy ultrasound. This course was created to train healthcare workers to perform basic pregnancy ultrasound in parts of the world where formal training is not available. The videos, as well as other educational materials, available at tinyurl.com backslash uwultrasound, are designed to be used in a two-week ultrasound course. The hands-on sessions in the trainer's guide are an essential component of this course and must be supervised by an experienced ultrasound practitioner. This is not a comprehensive pregnancy ultrasound course and does not result in an official certification or diploma. After you finish the course and pass the written and practical tests, we strongly recommend you have at least 40 hours of scanning experience with clinical mentoring before you undertake unsupervised scanning. My name is Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf, and I will be narrating this video on infection prevention and control in our pregnancy ultrasound series. Infection prevention and control refers to policies and procedures used to minimize the risk of spreading infections, particularly in healthcare facilities. To reduce transmitting infections between patients and staff, we will review the fundamental infection control principles that are most relevant to conducting ultrasound. Please visit our website for access to all of our video and training materials. The goal of infection control is to reduce the occurrence of infectious diseases. Specifically, infection prevention and control protocols are designed to protect patients, healthcare workers, and the community from exposure to infectious agents and prevent the transmission of disease. You are already aware of infection control practices, such as using personal protective equipment like gloves, gowns, and masks, and giving safe injections. Three additional infection control procedures include hand hygiene, safe handling of contaminated equipment, and respiratory hygiene. Hospitals have even more protocols, such as sterilization and disposal of infectious waste materials. We will only discuss the infection control guidelines, which are most relevant to obstetric ultrasound. It is ideal to hand wash before and after examining a patient, before putting on gloves for clinical procedures, and before leaving work. Hand washing should occur after arriving at work, direct contact with the patient, removing gloves, using a toilet or latrine, and any time that your hands may become contaminated. Please pause the video now to ask participants to explain more about their hand washing stations and if soap is readily available. This is a good time to problem solve as a group how to best accomplish hand washing throughout the day for each site. The steps in proper hand washing begin with thoroughly wetting your hands. Next, apply plain soap and vigorously rub all areas of hands and fingers, including fingernails, and between the fingers. Rinse hands thoroughly with clean water. Using liquid soap in a dispenser is preferred over bar soap. Then dry hands with a paper towel, a clean dry towel, or air dry them. Use a paper towel to turn off the tap if not elbow controlled or automatic. There are a few key points about hand washing. There should be an adequate water supply and liquid or bar soap. 
the health facility should have running water. Please think about how you may help improve hand washing practices in your workplace and how to adapt our recommendations to your workplace. Examples of some activities include discussing these recommendations with all staff, using regular monitoring and positive feedback, and using supportive supervision with all staff to promote compliance with hand washing. The next set of guidelines relate to the patient environment and ultrasound equipment. These are measures to prevent patient-to-patient -patient transmission of infectious diseases. First, keep the exam table clean. Cover it with a clean sheet or towel for each patient if available. In some areas, patient clothing, such as a large scarf, might be used to cover the table. Clean any visible contamination with soap and water. Clean the ultrasound machine before and after each use. Wipe the screen with a damp cloth or tissue and then dry. Finally, clean the transducer after each patient exam. Wipe off gel, then wipe the transducer with a damp cloth and dry. Respiratory hygiene, or cough etiquette, helps limit the spread of airborne droplet infections between patients, family, and healthcare workers. Please cover your mouth and nose with the inside of your elbow when coughing or sneezing. Use and throw away tissues. Finally, perform hand hygiene after hands have been in contact with respiratory secretions. A few more key points to help limit the spread of infection. Please provide tissues and trash cans for their disposal. Provide areas to perform hand hygiene in or near waiting areas. Encourage persons with respiratory symptoms to wear a mask or cover their mouth with a cloth and sit away from others. Educate fellow workers on the importance of infection prevention and control measures in all care settings and with all patients. We will reinforce these and other infection prevention and control guidelines during our hands-on sessions. Now we will discuss review questions. What is the purpose of infection prevention and control? The answer is to protect patients, healthcare workers, and communities from infections and transmission of disease. What are three things you can do to keep equipment clean and safe? The answer is hand washing, safe handling of potentially contaminated equipment or surfaces, and respiratory hygiene. How do you wash hands properly? The answer is to thoroughly wet your hands. Use soap, scrub, rinse, and then dry them or let them air dry. Use a paper towel to turn off the water tap. What is the proper way to cover your cough? The answer is to cover your mouth, use tissues, and then wash your hands. Thank you for your attention and interest in learning pregnancy ultrasound. Please pause the video now to ask your instructor any questions about this course. We thank the following individuals who played a major role in course development. Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. William Marks, and Nicole Goldsmith, registered sonographer. Many other individuals contributed valuable time and expertise in the instructional design and materials development, including Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf, Dr. Scott Barnhart, Dr. Michael Kawuya, Susan Kingston, and Stacy Lissett. 
Finally, we wish to thank Dr. William Marks for the use of images from his book, Ultrasound, A Practical Approach, and Jennifer Summers and Jan Hamanishi for graphic design and illustrations. The University of Washington Department of Radiology has trained healthcare workers in pregnancy ultrasound in many parts of the world. If you have questions about this video or course, please contact Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. William Marks, or Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf. This course was collaboratively developed by the University of Washington, Department of Radiology, Obstetrics and Gynecology, and the International Training and Education Center for Health, ITEC. It was made possible through a grant from the GE Foundation. Consano also contributed funding. We are grateful for the video production sponsored by the University of Washington Institute for Simulation and Interprofessional Studies. Please visit our website at tinyurl.com backslash UW Ultrasound to access all of our training materials.